I used to have real bad anxiety when I was young. Like if I forgot to do a homework assignment or something, I would get like real sick. And uh, um, like I would worry a lot, like all the time to the point it would make me sick. Looking back now, um, I mean, I can't really like blame people for that, but I think like a lot of that originated with um, wanting to please people and feel like I was gonna let like my parents down, mainly my dad. My older brother was really smart, you know, he was always in like honors classes and was a lot bigger than me and was really good at sports. So I think even at a young age, I always, even if it wasn't deliberate, I felt really compared to him. So if I wasn't doing as well or if I, I just felt like I was going to get a lot of like lash back from that. So I think I would like really worry about living up to his shoes because I thought that that's like what my dad's expectations were. To get the ball back. Here comes Weddle off the edge to set up the screen. Kyle <laughs> 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 Howard. So, I mean, we've seen it all in this game. Joe Glenn taking snaps. Kyle Howard on the screen. <laughs> oh, my gosh! Watch Trent. He does good blocking. Watch him. See him here on the end? Good job, Trent. So I was just like felt like weak, you know what I mean? Like not strong, not big. So I had like this chip on my shoulder that like, I needed to prove like that I was gonna be like a badass. Trent? How was the camping trip? Yeah. What was your favorite part? Okay. So I remember I got in my first fight and I got a lot of attention for that. Like, and I really like fed off that and I like wanted people to be scared of me. I started drinking pretty heavily, I remember that, and uh, I think that's about the time I was just like turned 21 and was going through some personal stuff, and I owned a house, I was doing all these good things, I had a pretty good job, but I was 21 and felt like I was 40. All my other friends were still in college, you know, or still doing fun stuff, and so like I, <clears throat> I wasn't quite ready to grow up to be handling those amount of responsibilities, I think. Just kind of felt all alone, so just on with the booze and um, the enemy was just super attacking me, especially when I would drink, which I thought the drinking was numbing the pain, but really it was just making it way, way worse. Yeah, I've been on a battle. Trying to live right, but these demons keep haunting me, bringing up my past when we go back down that road. But I'll fight the good fight. Yeah. Being at the lowest of lows, friends turning to foes, heart turning to stones, heart turning to stones. And on the run on the road, backpack full of clothes, no place to call home, no place to call home. Time's supposed to heal, but this time keeps passing. I cover up my pain with these dogs.
up some glasses. I say I'm okay, but nobody's asking. And I've been at my lowest low. Been at my lowest low. I got a dope uh, reference letter from that facility, that Denver facility I went and did. They sent me a reference yeah. letter so I can try to like send it to more places. I went and taught the kids at Mitchell. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I seen Wavy was doing that. Yep. And then we are filling out our District 11 partnership forms right now. And we're gonna have like an after school program in here for the kitties. That's tight. Yeah. I'm about to like, I can do this. Right. No right. problem, dude. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, you good? You guys ready? I had three pretty uh, substantial uh, suicide attempts that I lived through. And uh, the second time I remember most vivid because it was like the most sure decision one I had felt, you know. Um, I was at a bar with some friends. I got into a fight and got kicked out. Um, Started walking home. I used to do car upholstery, so I had like brand new razor blades for cutting leather and stuff. And I grabbed a razor blade and just like cut my wrist as deep and as far and as hard as I could on both arms. And uh, I remember sitting there and just like, just getting soaked like wet down through my pants I could feel it like running into my shoes all over the couch and uh then I remember getting sick um so I was trying to make it to the bathroom and I was like puking and uh like going to the bathroom all over myself because I was losing a lot of blood and uh I just remember like my vision going in and out like it was like almost with my heartbeat, like, doof, doof. When I got kicked out of the bar, I was like called everybody in my phone trying to get a ride. And uh, one of the people I called was my dad. He didn't answer, but I guess I put my phone in my pocket before I hung up. So I like left him a, a, a voicemail of just pocket swishing around, you know? So he got that in the morning and he just, he tells me now that he's never felt like a force was telling him that he needed to go check on me. So he came by my house and my truck wasn't there for whatever reason. I don't know if my dogs were barking or what, but he felt the need to like come inside and check and he had the key to my house. So he came in and found me. Um... I'm not sure if he, if I had a heartbeat or not, but I'm pretty sure I was just about there. Mm -mm -mm. Did you say sometimes we just need some bud? No. Sometimes we just need him. <laughs> some butt. But. His butt. <laughs> Here you go. All right. I've always been super into music. Like, I have high emotions. So I've always listened to music based off emotions, you know, to get pumped for a game or when I was down or sad. Junior and senior year in high school, I kind of started like rapping with a couple friends. Never did anything with it, you know, it was just kind of messing around. But I didn't ever start taking it serious until my last year in prison. I would do some like cocaine every once in a while. I got really, really wasted one night and uh, we couldn't find any cocaine. My friend couldn't find any cocaine, but my friend said, I got this meth. That was the first time I smoked meth. It was nine months after the first time I ever smoked meth that I caught my first case. And uh, someone who I thought was a pretty close friend set me up to do a controlled buy 
and I sold a quarter pound of meth to an undercover cop. Uh, my mom, being the caring woman that she is, bonded me out. I'm sure she regrets that. I wasn't going to sell drugs anymore because even people that are close to you will tell on you so they can get out of trouble. So I thought I would just start robbing drug dealers. I wound up being on the news while I was on bond for my dope case. So I didn't show up to trial for my dope case, and I went on the run. Felt like uh, I wasn't able to commit suicide right, so I was just would be living as crazy as I possibly could, hoping that someone something would happen to me. My mom left me this message that the Bonds people, they're tripping on her, saying they're going to take her house and all this stuff, so I'm just... I didn't want to be like that, <laughs> that big of a piece. And then it was shortly after that I uh, called the bondsman and told him that I would turn myself in. It's what I needed. And I used it as a stepping stone instead of a tombstone. I went with a couple of friends of mine to a like youth alternative school and facility in Aurora and uh, we shared our stories and I did a performance for them and uh, you know they have counselors or people and whomever, teachers telling them like, oh, you don't want to be doing this. But it's hard to relate to somebody who's never been through what you're going through. Basically, the reason I do it is uh, to help people like me, you know. It's, it's hard to change your life. But if you could just do it day by day, it's a lot less overwhelming. I mean, I still have those temptations, you know what I mean? I can't do it by myself. Christ will give me the strength to be able to keep my cool and stay on the mission that he's given me. Treason! 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 Treason!